we review A Quiet Place Part 2 on Film Threat Reviews. I'm Alan Ng. I'm with uh, I'm with activity <laughs> writer Rob Rector, and I'm also with the founder of HorrorBuzz.com, Norman Gidney. Hey, how you guys doing? Wonderful. Super. How are you? I'm Happy good. To be here. Are, yes. Okay. We are reviewing uh, A Quiet Place Part Two. Uh, following the events at home, the Abbott family now face the terrors of the outside world. Forced to venture into the unknown, they realize the creatures that hunt by sound are not the only threats lurking beyond the sand path. It's written and directed by John Krasinski, stars Emily Blunt, Millicent Simmons, and Killian Murphy. All right, so I, uh, full disclosure, I have not seen the first movie. I did see this one, though. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so uh, just uh, real briefly, Rob, you reviewed it for us. Give me just general impressions of the movie. I couldn't think of a better note to start heading back into theaters on. Um, it was, uh, it was thrilling. It lived up to my, I didn't have expectations, but it lived up to any expectation I could have had for a sequel. Um, and, uh, there were some superbly crafted, uh, scenes and scares throughout. And, uh, you know, I just, it was, it, it was that, that made me miss going to the theater all the more. All right. How about you, Norm? What'd you think? Uh, well, I, I agree with Rob. I mean, it's, it's the perfect way to re-enter cinemas. That's for sure. Um, but I, I have the same problems with this movie that I had with the original and, uh, you know, the, the gaping plot holes and, uh, but if you just stick to the actual story and what's on screen, it's, it's a hell of a ride. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do have some questions about it, which we'll probably get into later, but uh, I think I want to address first this. I, well, the fact that this is a sequel, uh, it's part two. Um, so how you, obviously you two saw the original, uh, how does it do as a sequel? And, and generally I qualify it two ways. One is did the movie bring back what was fun and great about the first movie? And two, did it effectively open the world or open the story more? Uh, so how does it, how does it uh, do as a sequel? Norm, you want to take this? Oh, I think it, it does a, a wonderful job uh, carrying over from the first film and uh, delivering what the first film offered. It, it doesn't reach the uh, just the white knuckle crazy uh, craziness of, you know, a birth <laughs> in a bathtub, but, <laughs> um, you know, which was like insane in the first film. But uh, it definitely it definitely delivers absolutely. So and the what? World, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was, I was going to say the world opens up just a little bit more, and I think that's what I liked about it too. Instead of going to where we get to see the origin stories of these the, these creatures, and we get to find out their purpose and everything, the lens doesn't open up that wide. It opens up just enough to kind of fill in some of the gaps, and then offer some new potential for for fewer or for the the subsequent films i think there's one more the franchise to continue yeah um yeah i mean that's kind of how i felt uh you know i i liked that it opened it up a little bit uh, it goes from the house to the town and then just a little bit beyond that so what was it about that first movie that that you thought it brought back so effectively the the um I, you know what I really liked and uh, typically the the prologue to it it starts off with day one so it flashes back to when the family was just before the alien invasion and what I really liked about it is it felt purposeful to show that it wasn't just so they could bring back Krasinski's character and it it was to show how this family communicated with each other using ASL, using sign language, and how that helped their adaptability when these creatures actually did arrive because they were so used to, to communicating in silence that it was actually to their benefit. Rob, you gave it a seven and a half, I believe. Uh, yeah. and Norm, I think you were kind of in that range as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I gave it a seven. I, yeah. you know. So what, what kept it from jumping to an eight or a nine? You know, we'll get into spoiler territory, uh, mm -hmm. but I just, you know, we'll get that later um, right. into the minutiae. But again, like I said, it's a fun ride, but uh, 
there are, I, I, it, uh, abrupt ending, mm -hmm. I hate it. I, you know, it, it, <laughs> the same, the, the same thing happens in the first film where, you know, it, it, it's something's going on and then cut to black directed by, you know, yeah. Krasinski. John Krieger. Like, yeah. Him from the office. Right. Right. So, yeah. How about I, you, I Rob? Mean, it was, um, you know, the performances were outstanding. Um, you know, the, the the same limitations that Norm said, I'll echo. Um, I feel, uh, you know, if I, if I had to, to find fault in it, you know, there were some, some um, uh, plot devices that I felt um, uh, they were very, very similar uh, to the original. So, um, I mean, we came in with expectations already um, and they kind of, you know, I don't, they, they recycled a little bit of it, but that said they did it effectively. So I, I can't really criticize it all that yeah. much, but. Yeah. And the, the one thing that I, I love about both of these movies is Krasinski and uh, his writing team really know how to build tandem plots to ratchet up the tension yeah. and then suddenly, you know, cut, like be intercutting with three separate things going on the and parallel it's almost editing. unbearable. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. The parallel it's editing really during good. that was amazing to take three separate plots that are, you know, three separate storylines and to actually have them do the, the rise and fall action simultaneously you know, because yeah. sometimes it can take you out when you leave from one to the other, but you're left in just the same place of tension in that last scene, and then boom, it mounts it again yeah. and again, and it was it was so effective. I thought that was really yeah. well done. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was, was similar right tension. Uh, the the ten yeah. the, the tension that occurred to all the characters and all the plot lines just matched, and and I thought yeah. that was that was that was brilliant. I, you know, um, so not having seen the first one, if you're curious. Um, you know, if you have a passing knowledge of what the first movie is about, you're going to do okay in this one. Um, oh, yeah. You can walk yeah. into this one cold and, and enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, clearly, I mean, one of the kids dies in the first one. You know, I, I didn't. I, I got kind of confused as to which kid yeah. died, but, <laughs> yeah. but I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. With, that, that's what made me fall in love with the first one. When they opened me with killing a kid, I was like, oh, all bets are off. All right. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, and then um, you know, and then my wife had to tell me what happened to the John Krasinski character afterwards. But you know, I kind of get it. He he had to kill one of the parents uh, of in that first movie. Oh yeah. uh, man, we should have given a spoiler alert for people who have not seen part one. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oopsie. You know what we're talking about. <laughs> you know, you have to know this stuff if we're going in too. Right, uh, right. <laughs> you know, they are keeping it within. I think it's a two-hour movie. Um, you know, I feel like if, if you really get in deep and it becomes like walking dead territory, uh, it's just going to expand the movie, drag it out much longer than I really wanted it to. And Unnecessarily, I, you know, because yeah. some of it you don't need to know. Nope. Mm -hmm. And that's what I loved about the efficiency of the first one. You know, we, we didn't get any clue and it was just so cut down to the bone. Like it was just, you know, we didn't have to have backstories. We didn't have to have family gatherings prior to and these mm -hmm. you know halcyon days where they were yeah. having fun no it was they're in peril they're in jeopardy there's some ugly ass flower-headed lizards that are out to kill them <laughs> there you go all right so um i think we we're all pretty much in agreement across the board rob you gave us seven and a half norm you said seven i would give it a seven and a half as well. If you don't want spoilers, this is a great place to bail out. Uh, we may even run up an ad here. Who knows? Uh, I'm with uh, Film Threat contributing writer Rod Rector, uh, also with founder of HorrorBuzz.com, uh, Norm Gidney. Can I stop Norm, holding the sign now? Favorite. What? Can I stop holding the sign now? Yeah, I'm going to be tired, Norm. Oh. Okay. All right, so I, with, just right, like, sorry. Yeah. So with that, put it up there. Let's get out of here. <laughs>